Assalamualaikum and a good day. My name is Siti Nurul Arusha 252729 and today video reflection we are going to talk about or discuss about the case of Sunny Angs against public prosecutor. This is a 1916s murder trial of Singaporean case where in this case the evidence is entirely based on circumstantial evidence because the victim body cannot be found anywhere to be proved before the court that the appellant is the one who committed the murder. The appellant, Mr. Sunny Ang, and his girlfriend, which happened to be the victim in this case, Miss Jenny, went to the sea for scuba diving where in this accident, Miss Jenny met her death. So in the first instant, we could say that Mr. Sunny cannot be charged with offence of murder because there is no body found in this case. In order to determine this case, we should look into the brief facts of the case. So previously, Jenny and Ang met in 1963 where she was 22 years old, worked as a bar waitress while Ang is a 24 years old man with a quite miserable life I could say. However, later, they became romantically involved. So after some time they were together, on 27 August 1963, the couple went to the sea near two islands called Pulau Dua to scuba diving and to collect corals. The appellant had hired a sampan from a boatman called Yusuf Ahmad and on his direction, Yusuf had taken both the appellant and Jenny to a place between the two islands where the water currents were strong, dangerous and hazardous. The appellant had dived in these waters on a previous occasion and he is uh, in a position to know that. However, he assisted Jenny to put on the diving equipment, allowed her, a novice diver, to go down alone and wearing a flipper which had been, which had been previously cut before that. Uh, in this case, Jenny was described as a, a novice scuba diver or a beginner where she had a little experience in scuba diving and it is known to the appellant that uh, although he is a beginner, he claimed that she made a good progress under his tuition. In this case, uh, Jenny went to, to go down alone into the sea twice. However, on her second dive, she never resurfaced. The appellant did not go down to the water himself when the disease had failed to resurface for the second time. They tried searching around the boat for air bubbles but failed and they headed over to St. John Island in order to call the police and seek help. In this case, the evidence relied upon by the prosecution was wholly circumstantial. For that reason, it is relevant to set out more important facts and circumstances from the circumstantial evidence. Firstly, testimony by the boatman Yusuf Ahmad, which I could say that he is the key witness to this trial. Yusuf said that two months before he had taken Ang and Jenny to Pulau Tertukor. Only Ang went diving that day while uh, Jenny swam. Uh, Yusuf said that she did not seem very skillful, and in this accident, the appellant did not go down to the waters himself when the disease had failed to resurface. On the way to the St. John Island, Yusuf said that Ang did not act as a worried boyfriend would do. In fact, he did not ask Yusuf to speed up the boat, nor he was panicked. In fact, he calmly changed out of his swimming trunk into his usual clothes. This intention, this intention was caught by prosecution that allegedly said that the appellant's real intention was to murder Jenny and in pursuance of the intention, he assisted Jenny to put on the diving equipment which had been brought in the sampan and allowed her, a beginner diver, to go down alone wearing a flipper which had been previously cut into waters which he knew were dangerous and hazardous with the result that she met her death. The second circumstantial evidence in this case is that Miss Jenny is a novice or a beginner swimmer compared to Ang who is a great swimmer 
and six days after the incident, the flippers that uh, wore by the disease were found which were severed at the strap and cut into two places. And according to an expert and uh, witnesses at the trial, the loss of a flipper would result in a diverse loss of equilibrium and would affect the diver's mobility. As Jenny was an inexperienced diver and the water near the islands were dangerous because of its strong currents, this would have caused her to panic and, and inevitably drown. And the other one is that she did not wear a glove to collect a chorus, which is it is a common practice for uh, someone to go to collect chorus to wear glove, but she did not wear it. And Ang, who was an experienced diver, allegedly made the cuts as he would have understood the likely outcome of this action will stood again from the insurance payouts for Jenny's death. Previously, I had mentioned that Ang is a man with a miserable life. This is because he was a bankrupt, a failed uh, pilot, a failed teacher and a failed law student. And he lived in a debt which clearly made him in need of money and that could be a motive for the crime. On the 27th August 1963, the fateful date, Jenny was insured against the accidents with several insurance companies with a total sum up being $450,000 and one of the insurance policies under which Jenny was insured for the sum of $150,000 had lapsed on the 26 August 1963. However, the, poli the insurance policies was renewed by the appellant on the morning on the 27 August 1963. This means that if Jenny Died, had died after the five days, there would be no insurance to be claimed. Uh, Jenny, who was a bar waitress, she earned $19 per month and about uh, $10 in tips per day when she worked. And she made a will on the 7 August 1963, two weeks before her death, in which the appellant's mother was named as the sole beneficiary. And after the incidents of her disappearance, less than 24 hours, the appellant made formal claims on the three insurance companies which had issued policies covering her against accidents. Based on circumstantial evidence given, I personally feel that uh, it was unfortunate for Jenny to met her death in such a tragic way. And how would a sane man uh, how how would a sane man could treat her loved one such a uh, sunny ang treat her girlfriend in such a bad way that she met her death based on the testimony given by the boatman and the evidence that Jenny was a beginner diver and the insurance policy. The insurance policy is the essential elements in this case because um, it is clearly portrayed that uh, Sunny Ang is uh, in need of money and because his girlfriend had a lot of, uh, what we say, a lot of uh, insurance policy that cost a uh, thousand of dollars he he would blind his his eyes by money over his love so I would say that the circumstantial evidence in this case was strongly pointed out against Sunny Ang's again against this case as the uh, murder of Jenny in order to get her money to pay his debt. The term relevant facts in the Evidence Act is the evidence that does not directly show the judge that the crime was committed by the accused, but rather the relevant facts can help to prove the facts in issue for a case.
The decision in Sunny Ang against public prosecutor had influenced the Malaysian case of Datuk Susilawati Lawia and her former lawyer where the court had to deal with the murder trial without a body. In this Malaysian case, Datuk Susilawati Lawia and her three companions were murdered by her former lawyer where he later burned the bodies completely in order to avoid detection. He later was charged and convicted for murder through purely circumstantial evidence. Among the circumstantial evidence that was seized by the police is a cricket bat which had traces of blood and the police also took cut and swept of blood traces found on the walls of one of the buildings. The murder is said to took place to took place in one of the farm in Selago, and in the crime scene, the police also found burn locks in a rubbish dump not far from the farm, and the police found there is burn zinc sheets, some of which have uh, traces of blood, and all these items were seized and handed over to various agencies for forensic examinations. The prosecution also, in this case, had affirmed that there must, uh, there could be a motive or preparation in conduct of this offence against the disease. In the same essence, we could say that uh, Sunny Ang is a, a strong and good case that was structured based on the circumstantial evidence that later being referred or being influenced in the decision of Malaysian court as a, in the case of Datuk Silawati Lawia.